Hi, my name is Adam Allegro, and I did my presentation on Robert Kappa. Um, Robert Kappa, one of the best war photographers in history, uh, he was born in Budapest, Hungary, in 1913 as Friedman Andre Erno to Jewish, Jewish tailors and grew up in a world consumed with war. World war I would rage on through Kappa's childhood, which could have been a catalyst for future career as a war photographer. That you can see, uh, you can see two pictures of Kappa, and here's a um, here's a snapshot of what Budapest looked like in 1913. So in 1931, he was arrested during a demonstration um, uh, by the Hungarian police and was released on the condition that he leave Romania immediately. He then fled to Berlin to study journalism at the German Political College before the Nazi Party decreed that Jews could not study at universities. Uh, then he began to take an interest in photography, and this is actually his, his first uh, Leica that he used to take uh, pictures of Leon Trotsky. Um, those were his first pictures to get published, and, and that happened in 1932. And here, here are those photos. Uh, after that, his ambitions uh, to be a writer changed as he became more competent with the camera, and he received more assignments. And he moved to France in 1933 amid increasing persecution of Jewish journalists and photographers by the Nazis and changed his name to Robert Kappa. Here he shared a dark room with uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson and David Seymour, both of whom influenced his work greatly. Um, he, his, his, big, uh, his big success um, and most influential photos early on were, were photographing during the Spanish Civil War. Uh, in particular, this photo of the falling soldier that he took in 1936, which, which did give him, uh, gain him international acclaim. Uh, here are some more photos. The top two were taken in 1936 and the bottom two in 1938. And his images show a rare glimpse at a raw human condition, unfiltered and real. He shows us a side of our shared experience that many of us will never see firsthand. He made intimate images of war and conflict and the repercussions of such actions. He photographed in black and white with both 35 millimeter and medium format cameras. Um, and you can see how striking those, those photographs are in, in such uh, um, intense, you know, pre with such intense pressure. So this contacts he used uh, in, in China in 1938 um, to photograph and document the resistance the Chinese resistance against uh, the Japanese. Uh, he moved to New York City at this time and began working for Collier's Weekly in Life magazine um, once World War II broke out. And you can see here some more pictures that he took while he was in China. Um, and here's some more. I, I like the contrast on the uh, the right of those two those two images. Um, In 1944, uh, he was with the first wave of troops on Omaha Beach uh, during the invasion of Normandy, and he took 106 pictures that morning, but only 11 survived uh, a photo lab accident in London. Um, right now, you can see this picture of Palermo that he took uh, before that in 1943, and here are three of those uh, those 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 11 surviving images. Um, these are some of my favorite images. Uh, that he's taken. Uh, and, and one of the reasons I chose Robert Kappa was because uh, I, I am a vet and I've always been interested in the physical and emotional scars of conflict. And he dedicated his life to showing the rest of the world both the humanity and horrors of war. Uh, and he was killed doing, um, doing his job in Southeast Asia, uh, which, I'll, which I'll touch on in a moment. Um, but you can see how, uh, how those images, I can't even imagine um, Trying, trying to make images like that under under such uh, conditions. Um, so he also photographed in the post-war Soviet Union with John, Stein, John Steinbeck, and they ended up publishing a book together of of, of um, words and, and images. He was always interested in writing, and was uh, significantly influenced and inspired by Steinbeck's work. He was also a founding member of the Magnum uh, of Magnum Photos, along with Cartier-Bresson. William Vandevert, David Seymour, and George Rodner, and became Magnum's president in 1952. 
Um, and, and here you can see some refugees near Wessel, Germany in 1945, and more refugees in Haifa, Israel in 1940-49. Um, Kappa was, uh, he was assigned by Life magazine to cover the First Indochinese War in the early 1950s. Um, at that time, he was attached to a French regiment and wanted to get better photos. Um, so following his own, his own advice for great photos, he got closer and uh, subsequently stepped on a landmine. Um, he was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital uh, on May 25th, 19. 54 and um, um, these are these are some pictures of uh, Picasso's uh, family in France that he took in 1948 and, and as a true conflict documentarian Robert Kappa's photos give us a rare glimpse into the rawest human condition war he ultimately paid the highest sacrifice and his photos will hopefully live on um, as delicate deterrence um, in, in, in these times when we need it most um, and here are my, uh, the references that I, that I used and that's all. Thank you for listening.